So we've been talking about multiplication using unsigned and signed numbers in a sequential device that allows us to produce a combinational result. The multiplication result is combinational, but we're using sequential logic to build it because it is large and complicated and there's too many results to just list them all. We're going to do the same thing with division. Now when we do multiplication, we take two numbers and add them together over and over again until we get the result. With division, we're doing it backwards. We're going to be subtracting instead of adding, and we're going to be checking our result to see if we subtracted too much and then adding the result back again. With multiplication, we looked at the least significant bit of the multiplier to decide whether to add or not. That was our decision point. With division, we don't have that. We can't make a decision until we've subtracted. So first we're going to subtract. Then we're going to look at our result and see if we subtracted too much. And if we did, we're going to add it back and shift again. You'll see how this works. So to remind ourselves again, back from high school, this is how division looks. Long division written out by hand. Um, you start with the divisor, which is the number that you're putting into the dividend. The dividend is often or can be larger than the divisor. Um, and then we're going to see how many times the divisor is in the dividend. And the result of that is the quotient. So the quotient is the result. It's how many times the divisor fits in the dividend. And we also have a remainder. So we're not going to be using um, fractional numbers. Later in the course, we'll talk about how computers represent floating point numbers, but we're not using floating point numbers. We're just using integers. And so when we do a division, we're going to get a quotient and a remainder. Okay. And just like in multiplication, we started with partial products. Here in division, we have partial remainders. So we're going to start by subtracting the divisor from the dividend at a certain place. And we're going to get a partial remainder that we're going to then subtract again and another partial remainder and subtract again. So it's a little bit complicated, just like with subtraction, when we built the hardware for subtraction, we had to look at the possible cases and then decide what the result would have been if the subtraction was successful. Same thing with division. We have to look at the possible result, see what the result would have been. If the result would have been negative, we subtracted too much, so we sh just shift instead. The way we're going to do that is actually accomplish the subtraction, check the result, and if the result is negative, we're going to add that divisor back again because it wasn't it wouldn't have fit. It was too small. All right. So here's some words to make that all make sense. Multiplication is repeated addition, that means subdivision is repeated subtraction. And so instead of shifting to the right, we're going to be shifting to the left. If the result is negative, that means you took away too much and you have to add it back again. If the result is positive, you didn't su subtract too much. And so the value fits in the partial quotient. And so you put a one in the, or sorry, the, the value fits in the partial remainder. And so you put a one in the quotient. If the result was negative, meaning you took away too many, that means that the value doesn't fit in the partial remainder. And so you put a zero in the quotient in that slot. So that's the whole algorithm. Right? And it looks, again, very similar to the process that we've been using for multiplication. We initialize, now we're going to have different names for these registers, but it's the same idea. We're initializing the divisor into a register called M, the dividend into a register called Q, and a partial remainder into a register called A. And again, we set our count to Q. Then first we're going to do our shift, and then we're going to do our subtraction. If the subtraction results as a negative value, and we can check that just by looking at the top bit of that result, then that means that that value was too big and we have to add it back again. <clears throat> if it was positive, the value wasn't too big, we don't have to add it back again, and we set the bit of our partial quotient accordingly. And then we check our count and we go back. So that's the whole algorithm. The algorithm is gonna assume that the uh, dividend is bigger than the divisor. If it's not, then we'll just get a remainder, right? The remainder equal to the divisor. Um, for floating point numbers, we can do other things, but the algorithm for floating point division is significantly more complicated. And you'll see that at the end of the course. We're doing successive subtraction, which means each time if the result is negative, we subtracted too much. And we're gonna be done when the counter reaches zero. <clears throat> All right, so here is now an example of this. And again, there's a lot going on here, but it's worth taking the time to think about the example. We're going to initialize our partial quotient to, uh, sorry, our partial remainder to zero. 
we're going to initialize, we're dividing uh, 8 by 3, and we should get 2 remainder 2. So we're initializing our divisor to uh, 8, and we're going to look at our dividend <coughs> bit by bit. So first thing we do is we're going to shift it, and we're going to we're shifting it to the right, because each time we're subtracting from smaller and smaller values instead of adding to bigger and bigger values. So we're going to shift it to the right by 1, and then we're going to subtract, and we get a negative number. And that tells us that our divisor, dividend, divisor, doesn't fit in the first bit, okay? So then we have to add it back again, and we shift again. Now we have 2 here, and our number that we're dividing by is 3. So we're going to subtract again, we get negative 1. Again, that doesn't fit, so we put a 0 here again. Yeah, <laughs> I have... Uh, animation all set up. So then we check at this negative and it is, we put a zero back here again. Then we're going to shift again. Now we have eight, uh, sorry, four. And four minus three gives us positive one. That means it does fit. So we put a one in our partial quotient. And we shift again. And then we get two this time, two minus three gives us negative one. That's negative, it doesn't fit. So we put a zero there. Our result is 1, 0, which is 2, and we have 2 left over in our partial quotient. So that's our entire process. Right? Here's our result. This is the value that we built up piece by piece as we figured out whether the value fit into the quotient at each time. And then our whatever's left in A is our remainder. Right? It's our partial remainder until our count reaches 0, in which case it's now finally our complete remainder. And the hardware for division, again, looks very similar to the hardware for multiplication. We're shifting to the left instead of shifting to the right. We're shifting out into this instead of uh, using that as a carry-in. Uh, and we're adding, we're subtracting now instead of adding. And we need an adder subtractor because we have to be able to subtract first. And then if our result doesn't fit, we have to be able to add it back again. So it's got to be an adder and a subtractor. We need more complicated control logic to tell it when to add and when to subtract. We're looking at the um, value here to tell us whether or not it's negative or positive to tell us whether to add back. And we're putting our new values of our quotients here. So it's sort of backwards, right? Instead of checking this bit for whether or not we add or subtract, we're putting our result here telling us whether or not our subtraction resulted in a negative number or a positive number. Now, because the base hardware is more or less the same, we could build a single device that did both of these things. We need an adder subtractor. This register is the same. Let's clear this out again. The adder subtractor is a little bit different. This register is the, still the same, right? This register is still the same, although now it has to shift in both directions. This register is the same, although now it has to shift in both directions. So as long as we add an adder subtractor instead of just an adder, we allow the registers to shift in both directions, which we already know how to do. It's simply a matter of rebuilding this control logic to allow it to do either division or multiplication. The number of times through the cycle is the same. The shifting is the same. It's just whether we subtract and then shift to the left or we add and shift to the right. And that's subtraction. And that's division. Now, we don't have an associated sort of booth-style algorithm for division, although I will leave that as an exercise for you to build one. Uh, but the idea would be the same, right? We're subtracting negative and positive numbers, and we put a value in the quotient as we go. <clears throat> so that's the final result for quotients. Division and multiplication all work the same way. As we said before, if you take two numbers and multiply them together, then the physical size of that result, of that a product will be twice as big, right? There'll be twice as many digits in the product as in the numbers that you started with. Division is the same way. It doesn't feel like it, but it is, right? If you think about your you're taking two numbers and divide them, you take two n-bit numbers and divide them, you're going to get an n-bit quotient and potentially an n-bit remainder. And so your final result is two n-bits, okay? So if you have a 32-bit computer, you're going to need 64 bits of result for multiplication and for division. And when we build out our MIPS computer, you see that we actually store the result of multiplication and division in a separate register that's twice as big. And then we have to do some fancy logic to move it into one of our regular registers. So that's the 
uh, result with multiplication and with division. Uh, and it gives you a, a sort of a preview into how we're going to actually build out these computers as we go.